In this video, I'm gonna show you my personal Facebook ad strategy that you shouldn't use for dropshipping in 2024. So why am I saying that you shouldn't use my strategy? Well, that's because there's already a billion other Facebook ad tutorials out there of people telling you that their strategy is the correct strategy and you should follow theirs and don't listen to me at all. But in reality, there is no correct strategy. When it comes to Facebook ads, it's literally just a game of testing and no matter what strategy that you use, it's going to be different for the product that you are testing and the type of niche that your product is in. So whether you decide to listen to the other guru or you decide to look at my strategy, you're never gonna know what's gonna work until you actually test it out for yourself. That being said, I'm gonna show you my strategy that has taken my store to over $800,000 in revenue over the past few months. And you could decide for yourself whether you wanna give my strategy a try or not. Okay, so for the testing strategy, I'm just gonna use this toaster nightlight as an example. And let's say I wanted to test this product. What I'll simply do is go on my Facebook ads manager and click create new campaign. I'm gonna click the sales objective, then click continue. Over here, we're gonna select manual sales campaign and then click continue. For the campaign name, I always name it after the product that I'm testing. So in this case, I'm just gonna call it toaster lamp and I'm gonna keep scrolling down and leave everything unchecked. I know there's a lot of other strategies out there of people turning on advantage campaign budget. That's just what I personally don't like to do at testing. So if this is something that you've always used, maybe you can try to leave it off for a change. So from here, I'm gonna click next. And for the ad set name, we're not gonna worry about that just yet. I usually put the name of the interest that we're gonna be targeting for the product. So until we get to that part, then I'll go ahead and just edit this accordingly. So for now, you just wanna select a website and for the performance goal, you wanna make sure that it says maximize number of conversions and not value. This option is grayed out because I don't even have purchases on this product just yet, but sometimes Facebook will automatically select this. And what I've noticed is that when you select this, it's usually gonna increase the cost to advertise by a lot. And I just wouldn't recommend using that in the testing phase. So the pixel, you obviously wanna select your pixel and conversion event, you wanna select the purchase event. Never use any other event other than the purchase event because you're literally just gonna be burning your money otherwise. And from here, we're gonna keep scrolling down. And this is where we're gonna set the daily budget of our ad set. So when it comes to choosing your daily budget, I'm just gonna give you a quick guideline of the budget that makes sense depending on the price that you're selling your product for. So if you're selling a product that's $70 or less, then you can get away with a $10 a day budget. But if your product is a little higher ticket and it's around $70 to $100 or more, then I would recommend starting with a daily budget of at least $20 per day. And this is just because the more expensive your product is, it's generally gonna cost a little bit more just to acquire purchases for your product. And because I'm using this toaster nightlight as an example, you can see that it costs about $11. And my general guideline for setting your product price should always be at least 2.5 to three times whatever it's costing you to fulfill your product. So if we multiply this price by three, it's gonna be around $33. So we can assume that I'm gonna be selling this product for around $35. And because it's under $70, as I just said here, we're gonna be setting the daily budget of this product to $10. And for the schedule, I always start my ad set at the very next day at 12 o'clock midnight. And this is because you wanna let Facebook have a full 24 hours to spend your $10 budget as evenly and as controlled as possible. Because if you start your ad set at let's say seven o'clock at the evening, that's around five hours before midnight. And Facebook is basically gonna take your budget and spend it as fast as possible before the day ends. And it's pretty much just gonna give you really bad results. So I always recommend 12 o'clock midnight as your starting point. And now we're just gonna keep scrolling down and where it says advantage plus audience, we're gonna switch back to original audience options and then select use original audience. From here, we're gonna have the ability to choose our locations and the age and the gender and also some interest that we wanna target for the product. When it comes to locations, I always like to test towards one country, especially if I'm only using a budget of $10 per day. I know a lot of other strategies out there like to combine four or five countries at once, but I think that only makes sense if you have a higher budget of around $20 to $50. But because we are testing this product at just $10 per day, I want that full $10 to go directly to one country so that I can analyze the data properly. And when it comes to the age and the gender, I typically like to leave these as broad as possible just because I don't fully know which age is actually going to purchase this product the most. But at the same time, you can also use your intuition here. For example, if you're selling a beauty product, you'd probably want to select females in the testing phase because you know that's going to be the primary target market for that product. But this toaster nightlight is really broad. I'm sure that it appeals to any gender and also any age range because even both young or older people could probably buy a product like this. So I'm going to leave the age range and the genders untouched here. And when it comes to the interest, once again, I know there's a lot of other people out there telling you that you shouldn't touch this part and that you should leave it as broad as possible because Facebook knows who to target. And I don't fully disagree with that, but with my personal testing, I still 
feel like interest targeting does still work in 2024. And again, you won't know if it works unless you test it for your product. So because this product is a lamp, that's usually the first thing that I'll type on Facebook. And you can see that they have an interest that's called lamp. And the estimated audience size is around 22 million. When it comes to the audience size, anything that's like a million or more is totally fine. No matter what interest you choose, Facebook is just going to use that as a guiding point, And it's still going to target people outside of this window here. So that's why I feel like you shouldn't worry too much about the audience size. And as a reminder, I always select one broad interest that's related to the product. And once you select just one broad interest for your product, what you can do now is just select that entire interest. We're going to go all the way up and then we're just going to paste that into our ad set name. That way we know what interest this ad set is targeting. And then from here, I'm going to scroll all the way back down for the placements. You can leave this section untouched. Pretty much what this means is that the Facebook algorithm is going to show your ad to wherever it feels like it's going to perform the best. So I always like to let the Facebook algorithm do its thing. And then now I'm going to click next. And once you're on this page, this is where we're going to be setting up the actual ad creative for our product. So for the ad name, you can just name it anything that helps you remember whatever your ad is going to be. So I'm just going to put ad number one and then make sure to select your Facebook page of whatever you want to run your ads through. For the Instagram account, I typically just like to use the Facebook page itself so we can leave it as is. And then for the ad setup, we're going to select create ad. We're going to select single image or video. Multi advertiser ads, I'm going to leave this unchecked. And as you scroll down further, this is where you're going to input your actual ad creative. So for the example of this product, I'm just going to upload a few images of the product itself because this is just for demonstration purposes. So once you upload your photo or your video, it's going to ask whether you want to crop it or not. I strongly recommend that you keep everything at original and don't let Facebook crop it because if you do, then Facebook is just going to create a bunch of different versions of your creatives and you're not going to be able to keep the engagement of this ad post, especially when you start scaling. And what I mean by engagement is just all the likes and the comments on the ad post, which helps for social proof, especially when you're scaling. Once you do that, I'm going to click next. And then from here, we're going to keep relevant comments on. If you're testing a photo, it's going to ask you to add some music. You can leave that on. Image template, I would recommend leaving that off just because I think it does not look good. Visual touch-ups, we can leave on. Text improvements, we can leave on as well. Image filter, we can leave on. 3D animation, I wouldn't recommend turning that on. Expand image and add catalog items, you can leave those off. Unless you have a lot of other related products on your store that complement the main product that you're selling, then maybe you can leave this on. But nine times out of 10, I just leave it off. And then I'm going to click done. And as I keep scrolling down further, this is where we're going to be entering our primary text, the headline and the description, which is going to be all the text that you see above and below the creative itself, which acts as a supplement to capture the attention of the customers when they're scrolling on their feed. So what I'm going to do for that is just copy everything from my chat GPT prompt. And then I'm just going to paste it here on the primary text. And I'm just going to click enter to kind of fix it up a little bit. And this is the general format that I typically follow with most of the products that I test. It's just simply one sentence that explains what the product is and the benefit of it, followed by three features or benefits of the product. And then also a call to action at the bottom. And for the headline, I'm just going to take it from here and then I'm going to paste it. And for the description, I'm just going to also copy what I have on my chat GPT prompt and then paste it here and then backspace everything. And now you can see we have one complete creative with some really good ad copy and just a nice clear image of the product that we're testing. For the call to action, I always use shop now. I know some other people like to use learn more. Again, this is something that you can test for yourself. But for me, I always leave it at shop now. And then for the website URL, you just want to put the direct link of your Shopify store that is selling this product. So for example purposes, I'm just going to put toasterlamp.com. This is not an actual working URL. This is just for demonstration purposes. And once you set this up, you're pretty much good to go with your first ad. And when it comes to Facebook, I always recommend to test at least two to three unique creatives. So what I'm going to do is go on this section here, click these little dots, and then I'm going to click quickly duplicate. And then from here, I'm going to rename this to ad number two. I'm going to scroll back down and then I'm just going to delete this photo. And then you just want to choose your other photo or video that you want to test for the product. Run through the exact same steps that I just showed a few minutes ago. And you can either write a different variation of your ad copy. So you can literally just copy and paste this into ChatGPT and tell them to make another variation for you. Or you can just keep it the same. So in this case, I'm going to go back to my prompt and just tell them to make me two more. And you can see that I have another variation that I can easily copy and then paste into here and you get the point. So if you want to make your life easy and create ad copies like this, feel free to scroll down in the description and use my chat GPT prompt. It's available for you guys to use if you want to. And after doing that, we've basically published our very first campaign that contains our three ads and then also the ad set that we created, which contains one interest that's related to our product. So what I'm going to do now is create nine more ad sets that all contain a different interest that's related to the product that I'm testing and also leave a few ad sets with no interest at all. That way we're testing both interests and also using 
using the Facebook algorithm to find the customers for us. So that basically means we're gonna have a total of 10 ad sets in this testing campaign where five of those ad sets are gonna contain interests and the other five are just gonna be broad with no interest at all. So if you're feeling a little bit lost, don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through it. So what I'm gonna do is select the very first ad set that we created and click duplicate. Then I'm gonna create nine copies of this ad set and you're gonna make sure that this option is checked on and then click duplicate. And once you're on this screen, you're gonna select each ad set here and then choose a different interest that's related to your product. So I've selected this ad set that we've copied. I'm gonna scroll all the way down and you can see that we have our original interest here. We're gonna click suggestions and I'm just gonna choose another interest that's related to the product that I'm selling. So I'm just gonna select nightlight and then I'm gonna remove lamp so that nightlight is the only interest that's on this ad set. I'm gonna highlight this and then I'm just gonna copy it, scroll all the way back up and then paste it into my ad set name. That way I know that this ad set is targeting this specific interest. And then from here, you're gonna go to this left-hand side and select one of your other copied ad sets and you're just gonna do the same thing. You're just gonna select another ad set that's related to the niche of your product and you're gonna do this three more times because we want a total of five ad sets that all have one interest per ad set. So I just took a quick minute and I edited five ad sets that all have one interest per ad set. So you can see I have one ad set that's targeting lamp. I have one ad set that's targeting nightlight. I have an ad set that's targeting LED lamp, one for lighting. And lastly, another ad set that's targeting the home decor interest. And now we're just left with five more ad sets that we still need to make some changes to. What you're gonna do is just select these remaining five and then click edit. Then you're gonna scroll all the way down and we're simply just gonna delete the interest out of these ad sets. And now what we're doing is just not targeting any interest at all. We're just gonna be leaving this as a broad ad set and letting the Facebook algorithm try to find the customers for us for the product that we're testing. Once you do that, we're gonna click X right here. We're gonna go to this little drop down that's next to the edit button right here. We're gonna select a name. We're gonna highlight everything here and we're just gonna call it broad dash one. And you can see that it's just renamed all of our ad sets with broad dash one. But for the other ones, we're just gonna put it in numerical order. So I'm gonna delete this and put two and then put three over here, four and then five. Once you do that, you're gonna go down here and select publish. And once all of your ad sets have been published, once again, you should have a collection of five ad sets where five of them don't have an interest at all and they're all targeting broad. And then the other five contain interests that are related to your product. And within each of these ad sets should all contain the exact same copies of those three ads that we just went over a few minutes ago. And as a quick mention, if you do need help with creating high converting ads for Facebook ads, I would strongly recommend watching my in-depth tutorial here where I literally show you behind the scenes of how I edit videos for Facebook ads. So feel free to watch that in case you're struggling with making high converting ads. All right, so now that you have a testing campaign that's ready to launch, here are all the metrics that you wanna be looking out for for the next few days. So on day one of running your campaign, you wanna let each of your individual ad sets spend at least half of your daily budget. So for example, I created 10 ad sets all at $10 each. What I'm going to do on the very first day is let these ad sets spend at least $5 before I start to make the decision on whether I should turn these off or keep them running. So what you're gonna do is pay attention to your cost per click column. So in this case, I have a column that says cost per unique outbound click. And that just basically means anyone who's actually clicked on a link and was brought to a page that was outside of Facebook. And then also your CPM, which is basically just a calculation of how much Facebook is charging you just to show 1,000 people your ad. If your CPM is around 50 to $70 or higher and your cost per click is around $2 or higher, then you should immediately kill those ad sets. And the reason is because these two metrics basically say that your ad creatives are not perceived as high quality to the Facebook algorithm and it's just not a strong enough creative to get people to click on that ad over to your website. And because you have a CPM that's $50 or more, it's just way too expensive for you to get any meaningful results out of that. And it's just going to be really hard to continuously run those ad sets at a very expensive CPM of around $50 to $70. So to keep it simple, if you see any of these metrics here, just kill those ad sets right away. And you can let any of your ad sets continue to run if your cost per clicks are anywhere between a dollar to a dollar fifty or less and has a CPM of around $35 to $40 or less. And there is just one exception to this rule in that even if you have a cost per click that's $2 or you have an extremely high CPM, but you still ended up getting a purchase out of one of your ad sets, then you should let it run anyway. And on day two, we're basically gonna do the same thing as we did on day one. We wanna wait till all of our ad sets spend at least $5 and then we're gonna pay attention and see if our cost per clicks are still maintaining under a dollar to a dollar fifty and make sure that our CPMs are still around 35 to 40 or lower. But this time you wanna see at least one to two ad to carts on any of your ad sets. If by this point you don't see a single ad to cart on any of those ad sets, then you have the option to either kill the ad set or if you're getting really, really good cost per clicks and I mean you're getting cost per clicks that are under a dollar and it's just looking really good, you can still let those ad sets run and let it spend that full $10 and see if you can get a couple of ad to carts. But usually within half 
half of your daily budget spent if you still don't have any buying intention at all. That might just mean that your product price is a little bit too high. You don't really have an attractive offer. And I would suggest turning off those ad sets and making those changes accordingly on your website. And then by the end of day three, you should ultimately have gotten at least one to two purchases on any of your ad sets. If none of your ad sets have gotten any purchases by day three, it probably means your product is not a winning product or your ad creative is just not strong enough and you're just gonna have to go back to the drawing board, test new creatives once again, or simply find another product. Okay, so let's say after a full three days, you managed to get a few ad sets that got you some purchases. On my screen here, I just put some emojis next to ad sets that we're gonna label as our winning ad sets and are the ones that got us the purchases. What you would do is select each ad set and then go to the ads tab and see which of the three ads that you originally tested are the ones that got you the best results. Let's say that ad number three is the one that got all of the purchases. Then we can basically consider this our winning ad creative and this is going to be the creative that we're going to continue scaling onto the next stage. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at all of our interest targeting ad sets and see which of the ones actually got all of those purchases. So again, I put a little emoji that tells you which ones got me purchases and are basically my best performing ad sets. And what we're now going to do is take over our winning ad set and put it into a brand new one that stacks together our best performing interest. So an easy way to do that is to just duplicate any one of your winning ad sets and we're just going to duplicate into the original campaign and then click duplicate. And then we're going to rename this as winning stack. And then we're going to scroll all the way down so that we can add all of the other interests that also got us some purchases. So if you look back into my ads manager, we're going to assume that lamp and lighting are the two other interests that also got us some purchases. So what we're going to do on this winning stack ad set is to make sure to add those interests as well. So I'm going to put lamp and then I'm also going to include lighting. So now we're just going to have a stack of the best interests that we found from our original testing ad sets. But this time we're going to focus all of our efforts on our winning ad creative. So I'm just going to click X and then I'm gonna go back to the ads tab and then I'm just gonna delete the two other ads that didn't get us any results. And then I'm only gonna leave ad number three, which is our winning ad creative, to be the only ad that's connected to our winning stack ad set. And then we're just gonna edit this ad set once again. I'm gonna scroll all the way down and we're gonna set the budget to $50. And then you wanna make sure to set the start date at the very next day at 12 a.m. midnight, just like we did in our testing campaign. And then you're gonna click publish. And then you're probably wondering, what if you got some purchases from some of your broad ad sets? So for example, we're assuming one of my broad ad sets got me a purchase. Then all we're gonna do is take that exact same winning stack ad set, we're gonna click duplicate, click duplicate again, and then we could just name this something like winning broad, and then we're gonna scroll all the way down, and then we're just gonna remove that entire stack so that this ad set remains broad with no interest at all, and then we're just gonna publish this one as well. So now you're gonna have one ad set that's targeting a stack of your best interests that contains your winning ad creative that you were able to validate from your testing campaign from all of your original testing ad sets, and then you also have the exact duplicate of that ad set, but instead it doesn't have any interest at all, but it's still focusing all of its efforts on that winning ad creative just to see, can we get some more buyers based on this ad creative? And what you're going to do from this point is that you're going to let those ad sets run for at least two days and you should ideally be getting purchases on both day one and day two. And you want to make sure that you're at a profitable return on ad spend. So make sure that you have this column set up so that you can see if you're actually profitable as you let these two ad sets run. And an easy way to know whether your ROAS is profitable or not, you can quickly download my ROAS calculator in my description below. It's completely for free. And then you can simply enter your product selling price, how much it costs you to fulfill that product. And it's going to tell you what your break even ROAS is. So for example, if I was selling a product for $50 and it cost me $20 to fulfill it, that means if the ROAS is above 1.67, then I know I'm making money off of that ad set. And if you notice here, I have a little section that says scale ROAS. This is basically just the ideal ROAS that you want to be seeing on your ad sets. That's going to tell you whether it's ready to scale or not. So after letting these $250 ad sets run for about two days, you ideally want to see a ROAS that's around this number or ideally higher before we move on to the next step, which is going to be the scaling strategy. And at this stage, this is where Facebook becomes the most fun because you're basically printing money at this point, but it also becomes the most dangerous because as you start pushing more budget to Facebook, it increases your likelihood of getting your business manager or even your Facebook profile banned. And this is why before I even get into this topic, I want to show you a strategy that I'm using to prepare my business managers before I start scaling any of my products to ensure I protect myself in the event my Facebook profile gets banned for whatever reason. Because in case you didn't know, if your Facebook profile gets banned and that's the only thing that's connected to your business manager, which is what runs all of your ads, you're not going to have any way to touch any of your campaigns or the ad sets that you're running. You'll basically lose your pixel, lose all of the data that you accumulated in your ads manager, and you'll have no way to run ads. So what I've personally done is that I purchased an extra Facebook profile that looks really realistic and has been open for a few years or so. And you can find this with just a few Google searches or you can join my Discord, check my Facebook Assets channel as I do have a partner that provides 
Facebook profiles. And from there, you can purchase any of the ones that they offer. Once you have that Facebook profile, what you don't want to do is log into that profile under the same Wi-Fi network or the same IP address as your main Facebook profile. Because if you do that and Facebook bans your original profile, they're also gonna see that that extra profile was also connected under the same IP and it's probably gonna ban that one as well. So we wanna make sure that we're under the radar and keep our extra backup profile in good standing and basically act as a good backup in case we get banned. And a tool that I personally use is something called Go Login, and it's basically just an anti-detecting browser that allows me to log in to my backup profile under a different IP address, and then that way I can connect my profile to my business manager while still being under the radar. And to quickly show you how you can do that with Go Login, what you first want to do is install the application. The link will also be provided down in the description below. Once you're here, you're going to go to the top right and click on Add Profile, and then we're just going to name this like FB Profile Number One, and then you want to make sure to select the Proxy tab, and you have the option to use your own proxies. I will also link a proxy service that you can use. But if you don't want to go through the hassles of using your own proxy, you can use one of Go Login proxies as well. And if you do decide to use one of their proxies, I would strongly recommend to use one of their residential proxies because this is going to contain an IP address that is going to be perceived as high quality and not raise any red flags to Facebook. And then for the country, you just want to choose your home country and then you want to click create profile. From here, you're just going to click run and then Go Login is just going to open a browser that looks just like Google Chrome. And then you're going to use this to go on facebook.com and this is where you can log into your backup profile without having any connections to your main profile. And once your backup profile is logged in using the Go Login browser, in the meantime, you can go back to your main browser, which has your main business manager. Go to the left-hand side here and go on all tools and then go on business settings. Once you're on this page, you wanna to go to the left-hand side and go on people. And this is where you can basically invite your backup profile into your business manager. And that way that profile is gonna have full access to your business manager and still run your ads in case your main profile gets banned. So all you would do is click on invite people. You can enter the email address of your backup profile if you have access to it. Otherwise, you can just create a new email address and then just use that to invite your profile. It doesn't matter what email address you use because once you accept that invitation, Facebook is gonna ask you to link your profile to that email address anyway, so it's gonna be fine. And once you have sent that invitation from your business manager to that email, you just wanna make sure to log into that email using the Go Login browser. And then that invitation should look something like this. And then you would simply click on get started. And then now your backup Facebook profile is going to be connected to your business manager and you're gonna be fully prepared and bulletproof in the event Facebook bans your profile for whatever reason. And once again, I do recommend using Go Login when connecting any backup profiles into your business manager. And I've partnered with them to let you guys try it out completely for free. And if you decide to use any of their paid plans, you can get up to 40% off. So make sure to check the link down in the description below. Okay, so getting back onto the scaling strategy, as mentioned before, you wanna pay attention to your $50 ad sets that we made earlier and make sure that after two days, you're within the range of your scale ROAS that you see on my sheet. Once you have validated that either of these ad sets are profitable after two days and are getting you a really good return on ad spend, then all you would simply want to do is duplicate one of those ad sets. And this time we're going to duplicate it into a new campaign and we can name it the same thing as whatever the ad set name was. So in this case, it's going to be our winning interest stack, but we're also going to put times five and also a little divider and then just call it a CBO. And the reason I put times five is because we're going to put five duplicates of this exact winning ad set and we're going to be putting it into a CBO campaign and we're going to click duplicate. Once you're on this page, you're going to click on the campaign up here. You're going to scroll all the way down and check the option that says advantage campaign budget. And for the daily budget, we're going to start it at $150. And then we're going to click the X icon here. Make sure that the campaign is still selected. We're going to go into ad sets and then we're going to go to this drop down that's next to the edit icon. We're going to edit the name over here. We're just going to put one and then we're going to edit each ad set name in numerical order just so that we know which ad set is which. And then we're going to click save to draft. Then we're going to click edit again, scroll all the way down and make sure that this CBO is also going to be starting at the very next day at midnight. Once all of those settings are in place, you're going to click publish. And now you should have a CBO at $150 per day, which contains five exact duplicates of your ad sets that contain your winning stacked interests. And within each ad set should contain your winning ad creative. And of course, if your broad interest is also working, then you would just make another duplicate of the CBO and just make sure that all of your ad sets are targeting broad as well. And what you're going to do is pretty simple from here. You're going to let that new CBO campaign run for at least two days. And you just want to make sure that you're at a profitable ROAS. So again, that's anything that's above your break-even ROAS or ideally above your scale ROAS number using my sheet. And if you notice within two days that it's really profitable and you're maintaining a healthy ROAS, then you're simply just gonna edit the budget and increase it by 20% every two days and slowly increase the budget until you hit a certain ceiling where you're getting a good balance of purchases on your store while being as profitable as possible. So if the original value of my CBO is 150 and we wanna increase it by 20%, that pretty much means that we can just raise this up to 180 and then click publish. And if you do make a change to your budget, just make sure to do it as early in the morning as possible because 
again, you wanna give Facebook enough time throughout the day to evenly spread your budget, depending on whatever you're setting it to. So that is basically my entire testing and scaling strategy for Facebook ads dropshipping in 2024. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to this channel, as I would truly appreciate that. And also check in the description below as I'll link to you guys a free cheat sheet that contains all of the metrics and the data points that we talked about for your testing and your scaling campaigns. And if you also want access to a bunch of other free resources that'll help you out in your e-commerce journey, make sure to join my free Discord group. And you can also connect with like-minded entrepreneurs who are also doing dropshipping and can hopefully help you out in your success this year. With that being said, I thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.